So remember when we left off here in the previous video with me cleaning the entire house? The reason I went into so much detail is because the bathroom is one of the first places I knew I wanted to make over. In that video, I also forgot to mention that I was cleaning the grout with hydrogen peroxide and baking soda just mixed into a paste. But as for the tiles, my initial assessment was not entirely accurate because I was like so sure that there was something on the tiles on the left because they look nothing like the tiles on the right. Like, come on, doesn't it literally look like someone spilled something on the finish instead of that actually being part of the marble? Because I mean, they don't even match the tiles in the shower. But spoiler alert, maybe it's just from a different batch because they remain to look like that. But for the sake of satisfaction and because I know some of you guys wanted a before and after, this is me cleaning the rest of the floors. And yes, my floors were nowhere near dirty, so that is all from the grout. The floor isn't entirely dry, unfortunately, but you can still see that there is a difference. So did it make it perfect? No. But am I at least satisfied that it is now clean? And if you saw the deep clean checklist, you know that I changed the shower head for one that has a filter and swapped out the shower curtain rod. But now we taking it a step further, or dare I say like five, because I am completely transforming this space with paint and being very dramatic. Why? Because I, I realize I think I, I think I want like a moody, a moody bathroom, which means we gotta go way darker. I'm talking like, I like showers by like candlelight. It's probably a sensory overload thing. I'm definitely like borderline hibernating when it comes to indoor lighting at all. We don't do the big light. No, we don't, we don't do that. We need to dial that back. So I'm going dark, which doesn't look at all apparent when you see this color swatch. I know it looks like highlighter green, it's not. And when it comes to painting, you know how you always like cut your corners first? Yes, you should be doing that. But you know what I noticed? You can just do that with the roller. Yes, you should do that first. And I, I am. It's not always entirely efficient. So yeah, you might still need an angle brush. But like when you try to be quick, this is definitely the answer. <laughs> Thank you.
by the way anything that i'm using cleaners tools ingredients all that i'd like to have everything just like in one place on the blog but currently it is under construction i think it needs a revamp so you can find everything in the description box instead of the website which by the way is very easy to do you can either drag everything to this portion of like your menu which will make it invisible you can leave some stuff and not others and create an entirely new page like a cover page or landing page that says coming soon or under construction or literally not make the page public at all and keep it under password so again usability easy to navigate as usual if you're a creator wanting to run a blog create an online shop or just have a portfolio on the internet you can run any type of platform with squarespace and run a newsletter and use their bio sites to link all of your social media channels so you've got options and you can get a discount Discount with my code abetweene or just head to squarespace.com backslash abetweene. The, ca the camera is not doing it justice, but um, at this point, I, I was scared. I was a little concerned. That that's a lot of green. And, and on camera, it looks like grass green. I promise. It's not. It's it's way more. It's you, Listen, you just have to trust me. I'm not a post-production artist. This is the best I could do. But you know what? You fail 100% of the things you don't try. So sometimes you just got to do it and then just deal with the consequences because like, what's the worst that could happen? I, I don't like it. And then I just paint it over again. And like, yeah, it took time. But that lets, it's called life. Grow up. This ain't the first time it's going to happen. So you might as well just practice. I feel like I remember a comment asking about what was like a good alternative to peel and stick tiles. And I was like, I got you because I'm literally on the hunt for the same thing. Well, this one's for you. All you need is vinyl. But if you're looking for a link in the description box, just know I bought this by the roll, thinking that I can cut each one of these individually, which I did. You can buy these pre-cut, but for what I saved in money, I paid with my blood, sweat, and tears. So in retrospect, personally, personally, just use the whole sheet. Use the whole sheet. You can, if you you want grout lines you can just fake those honestly i've done it before i'm pretty sure it was in the yeah kitchen makeover video it was like a subway tile and i wanted like a grid tile so i just went over there with some tape and voila i'll link that in case you didn't see it And honestly, this is so easy. Like I, even I am making this look more difficult than it is. Because like you can lay down more vinyl at a time. I'm just being cautious. If you just need to like remove the tile because you get something look, like right here, a little air bubble. It's because you've laid it uh, like wrong. <laughs> just lay it right back down, but push, push out in the direction that you peeled up. Got a little piece of gravel or something. And I can see the texture of it from the outside, a little bubble. All I gotta do, peel it back, pick it up. And unfortunately, this is a part one. I know it's the worst, but no one wants to be left on red. So to make you wait longer while I also wait for stuff that I ordered to come in, here you go. You can just, just eat it now. And when the rest arrives, that'll be part two.